All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at Java Swing. Swing is a package that allows you to write GUI applications and provides a lot of the components you would need for most GUI applications, such as buttons, scroll bars, text boxes, check boxes, things like that. So to get started, the first thing you want to do is import Java Alt with the wildcard on the end and also import javax.swing with the wildcard on the end there. Now Swing is an enormous library and this video is only going to scratch the surface of what's available there. But to get started, we're going to create a JFrame. JFrame has a few different constructors, uh, but the one we're going to use is just going to add a title to the top of our window. And I'm just going to call that Swing Demo. The next thing we want to do is give our JFrame a size or our window a size. So we will say JFrame.set bounds. And bounds is going to take an X and a Y and a width and a height. For the X, I'm just going to come in about 50 pixels. Also in the Y. For the width, we'll say 500. And for the height, we'll say 400. And then if we want to show our JFrame, we're going to set visible to true. And this is all you need to get a window open. So if we run the program now, you should see your window with your title up here. It doesn't do anything, but at least we have a window. Clicking this X is going to close the window, but it's not going to end the program. So after you click the X, Go ahead and hit stop down here to end the program. To fix that, we're going to add a line here that's going to tell it to actually end the program when the window closes. And that is going to be set default close operation. And we're going to pass in the JFrame exit on close. Now, to manage the components and the widgets that you put inside your window, uh, there are several different layouts and layout managers. We're not going to mess with that today. To prevent the default settings from doing things we don't want them to do, we're going to set our layout to null. Making the JFrame visible is the last thing I'm going to do, so I'm going to work in between that line and these other lines here. The first component we want to add to our window is going to be a label. So we'll create a J label. I'll call it label one. And for the constructor, you can type whatever text you want in here. J label also supports icons, images, and some other things. So you can look that up in the Java documentation if you want to. Here are the constructors that are available for a label. For this program, I'm just going to use text, enter, name. To put my label in the window, I need to give it a position. So we'll also set bounds here. I'm going to come in 10 pixels in both directions. With most computer languages, when you're giving a position, it's in reference to the top left corner of the screen or the top left corner of a window. So this is going to be from our window. We're coming in 10 pixels in both directions. For the width, I can specify a width or I can let Java determine the width based on the text that I've entered above. So to let Java determine the width, I will type label1.get preferred size dot width. And we can do the same thing for the height. Label one dot get preferred size dot height. And then we can add our label to our J frame by using the add method. We will add label one. And now if we run the program, we see our label up here in the top left corner. The next thing I want to add is a text field. That's an area where the user can type so they can enter their name. And we're going to use a J text field. 
I'll just call it TF and we will use the default constructor for this one. We also need to set the bounds on the text field. For the X, I want to set my text field at the end of my label. So I can say label one dot get width and then move over an additional 10 pixels for the 10 that I set on the label. So that will be the X position. The Y position will also come down 10 so it lines up with our label. For the width, I'm going to say 100. That should be enough room to type some characters. And for the height, I'm going to enter 18. And then we add our text field to our J frame. And now we have an area we can type up here. For the next component, we're going to add a button. And as you may have suspected, it is a J button. I'll call it B1. And for the constructor, you can enter some text. You can also put images on buttons. I'm just going to call this a submit button. Now for the height and the width of the button and the position of the button, we will also use set bounds. But before I do that, I'm going to get the preferred size for this button. To do that, I'm going to create a dimension. I'll just call it, I'll just call it D equals B1 dot get preferred size. And that stores all of the preferences in D. And then I will use that to set bounds. Now for the X position, I would like to have my button centered. To do that, I will need the size of the window and the size of the button. So we're going to do a little bit of math here. I'll get the width of my window using J frame I'll get width and divide that by two. And then I will subtract half the width of my button and that will leave my button centered in the middle of the window. And so using my dimension above, I'll take the width of my button and divide that by two. And that gives me an X position centered in the window. For the Y, I know my window is 400 pixels tall. We'll just come down 300 for that. And for the height and width, we can use the preferred size that we saved up here in D. So I will just use D dot width and D dot height. And now we can add our button. So J frame dot add B1. And I've got a submit button down here and you can click it. It doesn't do anything, but it's there. All right, if we want to add functionality to the button, we're going to add an action listener. So before we add it to the J frame, we're going to use B1.add action listener. And there's a few different ways of doing this. You can use an anonymous inner class, or you can use a lambda function. The lambda function is a lot cleaner and a lot simpler. And we can use the Lambda because the action listener only has one method that needs to be overloaded. So with the Lambda, it's just going to assume that you're overloading that method. So inside the parentheses here, we're gonna open a new set of parentheses. We're gonna type action event. We give it a name E. And then for the Lambda syntax, you're going to put an arrow open and close curly braces and we need to fix your imports to add the action event up here at the top. Inside these curly braces, you can write whatever code you want to happen whenever this button is clicked. So we could close the program. We could do a display to the console. Um, I think what I want to do here is set the button's text to something else. So we're going to change what the button says, and we're going to change it to whatever the user has typed up in our text box. 
of v1 dot set text and the text we want to set it to we will retrieve from the text box so tf dot get text just for fun so let's run the program we see submit here if I click it it goes blank if I type something in here like hey it says hey and if I type too much it cuts it off so what if I want to resize my button based on whatever has been typed up here back in my lambda function I can do a b1.setSize and I can use those preferred values again so get preferred size for the x or for the width do dot width and for the height we can use the height that we have if we want to we can just call our buttons get height method so now the height won't change but the width will change based on whatever Java thinks is preferred so now if we click it nothing is up here so the button gets shorter now if we type too much the button gets longer so that's how you can use the action listener uh, you can type whatever code you want in here to make whatever you need to happen happen whenever the user clicks that button and the last thing we want to look at is a keyboard listener this is a button click listener an action listener what if you want things to happen when the user types something in the text box? That one's a little more complicated, but I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to say that this submit button should not show up until the user types something in that text box. So after I create my button up here, I'm going to make it invisible. I'm going to say B1 set visible to false. And then I'm going to set up a listener, a key listener for my text field. So tf.add key listener. Now a key listener has three functions that have to be overloaded. So we cannot use a lambda here. We have to use an anonymous inner class. So I'm going to create a new key listener. Open and close braces. And fix imports and if you take a look at the key listener file you can see we've got key typed key pressed and key released this is an interface meaning an abstract class with abstract methods and because these are abstract we have to overload all three of them so inside here that's what I'm going to do public void key pressed And inside each of these methods, we're going to pass in a key event. You can use the key event to find out what key was pressed and a few other things. And fix imports again. Key pressed, key typed, and key released. In most cases, key released is going to be the one you want to use to write your code. We'll leave the other two blank, but then we can treat this just like we treat our Lambda function. You can write whatever code you want in here to be executed anytime a key is pressed inside that text field. So I said I don't want my button visible until they have entered some text inside this text field. So I can check my text field. I can say if tf dot get text that's going to return a string so I can use the length method to determine how long it is and I will say if it is less than one so they need to type at least two characters before the button is going to show up I'm sorry greater than one 
If it's greater than one, we're going to set our button to visible. And otherwise, we will set it to false, invisible. And let's try it out. We've got no button, but if I type something, at least two characters, I say, hey, our button shows up. I can click my button now. It changes just like it did before. If I erase, my button disappears. Type, it comes back.